Yeah, overall, it's just a major downgrade at quarterback for a major upgrade at your wide receivers. Overall, it's I think it's a little bit towards your favor in terms of being a good move since you do have Stafford, but if Stafford were to go down, you're really going to regret doing that. Um, and then next up, Toxic had Zach Ertz added while he lost Mike Myers. Mike Myers, besides being a Halloween killer, uh, it was doing jack shit. Zach Ertz is doing jack shit. So overall, that's a pretty good move to make up a solid upgrade at your tight end core. And I think his upside only goes up once Kyler Murray returns. Although there is still that little concern, the looming fact that they did get a rookie tight end, which could always hit you like an RKO with Zach Ertz. For now, it's looking good in terms of Zach Ertz, though. Um, so overall, it's an upgrade at your tight end. Um, your linebackers, you gain Quincy Williams, lost David Long. Quincy Williams has been pretty damn good throughout the season, 23 week one. He would have had more than 15 week two, but he got hurt early. Um, and then he lost David Long, who actually did okay week two, but week one was ass. Overall, it's a pretty good upgrade at linebacker. Um, I don't know exactly how many points Long put up, but I know he did better than he did week one, which still wasn't good. Um, and then he also gained Donovan Wilson. I'm not a fan of him this year. He did really good last year, but then they started at the ending of the season splitting his snaps with another safety. That's usually not a good thing in terms of fantasy. He might do okay, but I'm really not a fan of him. I guess you'll just have to wait and see how he does. I don't think it'll be good, though, just because he does have a lot of injuries as well. Forgot to mention that. Uh, he just, as you saw, that's why he was on free agency. He missed the first two weeks of the season already. He should play this week. That's the upside, but... I don't think he'll do nearly as good as he did last year just because he's going to be sharing a lot more snaps. Overall, I think Toxic's team upgraded, but they are playing a dangerous game with fire here where one of their quarterbacks to go down. They're going to be very they're going to be struggling pretty hard. Um other than that, it's a it's an overall upgrade though to the team. Next up, we're going to look at the guy Toxic actually traded with, which is Karen's husband, who just kicked things off with gained Devin Lloyd and lost um, Henry Mundo. Henry Mundo wasn't even starting, which is why I couldn't even pronounce the motherfucker. Um, and then Devin Lloyd is an upgraded linebacker. At least you know he's starting. He did eh, week one, week two. He did pretty good with eleven tackle solo. Devin Lloyd's pretty inconsistent. I don't know why he does this. He'll sometimes do really good, sometimes do really bad. But overall, at least he's an upgrade. At least he's startable. I I, I would drop leave it if I were you and start Devin Lloyd, but that's up to you. Um, overall, that that's for the start bench video, obviously. That's, that's a good upgrade to have, though. At least you have a starter now to replace the backup. Um, and then in the trade with Toxic Zenpai, you gained Lamar Jackson, who's going to be an elite quarterback option in terms of fantasy, one of the best you can possibly get out there. Um, you're going to be getting Zay Jones, Rondale Moore, Michael Gallup, all these guys share the same problem, and that's that they're all wide receiver threes on their offense. Rondale Moore has some upside. Once Murray comes back, he could actually be a wide receiver two and, you know, maybe start doing more with Murray. That's kind of the hope. Gallup, I don't see him ever being usable this season. Um, and then Zay Jones has upside like you'll see from week one, but he also has that downgrade or that downside like you saw in week two. Granted, he did get hurt in week two, so there's no really telling for sure. But I think he'll be boom or bust either way. He at least has a good quarterback play going for him. Um, overall, that's a pretty bad downgrade at wide receiver, but you got that elite quarterback, so overall it's a win. Um, and then you also, in order to make that trade happen, you lost Greg Dolchich, who's getting sent to IR, which really isn't hurting you. And then you cut Aaron Rodgers, who's currently in the hospital. You know, he, he might be dead for all we know. But anyway, uh, yeah, that, that's about it. Your team got an overall upgrade because quarterbacks are so hard to get now. But you did lose some um, good receivers in Michael Pittman and Calvin Ridley. Uh, like we were talking about with Toxic, those are pretty good guys. But overall, I think Lamar Jackson is worth more. Um, next up, we have Rick Tatorship. Rick Tatorship, in terms of the running back, gained Ezekiel Elliott, lost Raheem Mostert, and Tyler Algier. Elliott, I, it's very hard for me to trust him. I've been uh, using him in my leagues all season. Not using him, but 
having him in my leagues pretty much all season in multiple leagues. But it's going to be very hard to trust him in these weeks because they keep saying they plan on using him and then let him touch the ball like once or twice per game. So I really don't see Ezekiel Elliott as worth much until he proves otherwise. Raheem Mostert was actually looking good, but Devon Cain might eventually start eating away at some of his runs. But overall, he was looking better than I think anyone was expecting. And then I already told you about this. I told Pussy about this. Tyler Algier, you lost Tyler Algier. He's more of a Alexander Madison situation from a few years ago where if B. John Robinson goes down, he's a very good starter to have. But unless that happens, yeah, not really. He's not really going to be worth much, to be honest. But overall, that's still a downgrade to your running back room. Um, then in terms of your receivers, you lost Kendrick Bourne, which I don't really think matters, to be honest. He, like, I, I predicted this where he would have the good upside week one. Well, I didn't predict that he'd do good week one, but I predicted that he'd fall off after week one, especially with the return of Devontae Parker. So I don't think Kendrick Bourne is really rosterable in fantasy, to be honest. Um, your linebackers, you gained Mario Davis, you gained Alex Singleton, lost Leighton Van Der Esch, lost Eric Hendricks. I think DeMario, uh, De- DeMario Davis and Eric Hendricks are kind of equal. Um, I will say this, DeMario Davis is a lot safer of an option. Eric Hendricks going to the Chargers with a offer, he definitely has a lot higher upside, but he's going to be a lot more risky, plus he has the injuries. So overall, I lean that a little bit in the favor of Eric Hendricks, but not much. I'd say they're just about equal as you can get. Then you added Alex Singleton, lost Leighton Van Der Esch. Um, Overall, Van Der Esch wasn't doing shit for you, so I'm going to say that's an upgrade. There is one big thing to be concerned with with Alex Singleton here, um, and that's actually that not necessarily that he had seven points. That is a concern, but the reason for that is he went from having a 90% snap share in Week 1 to a 67 in Week 2, meaning he went from playing almost every snap to playing two-thirds of the snaps, which is pretty concerning. That's not a small drop by any means. It's very good news for Josie Jewell, but... It's not good news for him, unfortunately, so I'd keep an eye on that, which I'm really not looking too thrilled to if I were in Rick Tatorship's shoes. Um, and then this is where Rick Tatorship actually did really good in the off in the offseason moves here, or not offseason moves, in the free agency moves here. Uh, you gained Javon Holland, who you could argue won your, league, or your week last week, 27, 21 points. Dude is on crack, maybe crystal meth. You know, he's on it all. He's on that KFC $5 fill-up. Whatever it might be that's getting him going, he's doing it. Um, overall, amazing upgrade. Number He's ranked 36 in the entire league, and he's a safety. That's not too common. I don't know how long these numbers will last, but there's nothing suggesting otherwise for now. So overall, very big upgrade. You didn't lose anyone for him either. You also made some major upgrades at defensive line. Uh, you lost Dexter Lawrence, who really wasn't doing too much for you. He had an okay week, too, but... Other than that, he really wasn't going to be doing too much for you throughout the season. You gained Quinnen Williams, who's one of the best defensive tackles in the your defensive lineman in general in the league last year. Uh, he's usually pretty consistent. He rarely does bad. Um, you know, f- at least five, six tackles, and he still hasn't even gotten a sack this season, which is amazing news for you. Because say he gets a sack, that's twenty-seven points. That's twenty-three points. You know what I mean? Overall, very good move. And. K. Whitty Pay or Quitty Pay, however you want to pronounce it, on the other hand, has gotten sacks. Um, but he's done pretty good throughout the season. I think that might be what Pussy was hoping for, is that he kind of drops off based on the sacks. I'm not sure. But overall, he is one of the better... Say, uh, Jesus Christ, what is going on here? Anyway, it, I'm guessing somebody just scored a touchdown in terms of the real-life game. But yeah, that's actually happening right now. Um, but anyway... K. Woody Pay, I think, is going to be a definite upgrade for your defensive line either way. He's usually one of the more consistent guys as long as he can stay healthy. I think you'll end up liking him, but he's not going to be as consistent as, say, a Quentin Williams. Um, overall, this is definitely an upgrade for you overall. Um, you might be losing out on your running backs and receivers a bit, but I think you have enough guys to hold you over, especially if Taylor comes back and starts. Although, if Taylor does not come back or for whatever reason something happens with that, yeah, you might be a little fucked. But overall, I think they're good moves on paper. Um, And then we'll look at... uh, Next up, we're actually going to look at PMC Wagner, the guy you traded with again. PMC Wagner had the addition of Raheem Mostert from Rictatorship, and he already does have 
Um, he already does actually have. Uh, he already has Devon Kane just in case something were to go badly for Raheem Mostert, so that's overall good news. Uh, so it's a pretty good upgrade at running back. You did downgrade by losing Tank Bigsby, but that's really not that bad of a hit. The only scenario I'd say you'd want Tank Bigsby is in case uh, ETN got hurt, or in case you're pussy where you'll have him in case ETN gets hurt, just like you saw with Dr people who had Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt when Nick Chubb went down. Now everybody gets to laugh at Toxic Zenpai and... He goes and cries himself to sleep every night. Um, overall, then you also gained Josh Reynolds, and you lost Jackson Smith, uh, Smith to Jigba to me in a trade. Um, overall, I think that's a downgrade because at best case scenario, Reynolds keeps doing what he's doing until Jamison Williams returns, and then odds are at least his production will downgrade a little bit at least. Um while Jackson Smith Najigba has the upside of just continuing to do better each week, he's currently on the right trend, although we've only had two weeks of sample size to work with. Overall, I think it's a downgrade, though, just because while Reynolds' upside is looking like it's going down, uh, Smith Najigba, by the end of the year, is going to be going up, I think, especially if one of the Seahawks receivers ever were to go down. Um, your kicker, it's almost impossible to, val uh, to evaluate this, but overall, you have... Brandon Aubrey coming in. You lost Jason Myers. Brandon Aubrey has the upside because the Cowboys' offense is so much better than the Giants. However, last year, or than the Seahawks. However, last year, uh, Jason Myers for the Seahawks was one of the most, uh, one of the biggest field goal kickers in the league, meaning he kicked the most field goals. But, oh, and he was one of the more consistent kickers overall in fantasy. But Aubrey does have that higher upside. I just think Jason Myers is going to be a bit safer. But, I'm not going to tell you to go back and switch your pick or anything. They're about as equal as you can get. It's very hard to predict what the hell a kicker's going to do on any year unless they're Justin Tucker or Daniel Carlson. Um, your DB, you gain Christian Gonzalez, who's actually one of the highest-ranked uh, corners in the entire league right now, but that doesn't really necessarily help in fantasy. But he's done really good in terms of fantasy, too. Uh, throughout the first two weeks, he's had about seven tackles, six tackles. He had a sack. Interception, that means they're using him all over the field, which is what you want to see. So overall, at least it's a solid upgrade at your DB position. You did lose Quinnen Williams. I'm not necessarily a fan of that. I probably would have tried to, I don't know, make that trade happen with, say, Will Anderson or something where you don't know how good he's going to be. Quinnen Williams is almost promised unless he gets hurt to finish as a top 10 defensive lineman in the league. So overall, that's a pretty bad hit to take. Um... Overall, I think your team slightly downgraded this week just because I think Quinnen Williams is going to be a big player to lose out on, especially for your D-line position. Um, and then you did gain, gain Raheem Mostert, which is solid, but you also lost Smith Najigba, who I think it was going to be your, one of your wild cards later on in the year. So overall, I think it's a slight downgrade for PMC. Looking up at number next, or not number next, but the next guy, Scrambled and Wiggle Waggled. Scrambled and Wiggle Waggled, I think the only moves he made was he added Javon Hargrave, lost Shaq Thompson. Shaq Thompson went on injured reserve. I don't think he'll be back for the rest of the season, if I'm not mistaken. But overall, I don't think he was that great anyway. I think there were better options on the free agency list. Uh, and you have Javon Hargrave, who's currently stinking it up in the New York game. Um, maybe he gets a sack as the game goes on. We're only seven minutes in, but um, overall, I think it's still beneficial towards your team because that is a decent D lineman to have with high upside compared to, he does have a low up downside too, though, but overall, it's better just because Shaq Thompson, there's a lot of better free agents out there. Well, I can't say there's many with Hargrave, um, so it's a slight upgrade. Looking at MILF next. Milf actually, let's see here, what did Milf do? Milf added Quentin Johnston and lost McCool Hardman, which I think is actually a little bit of an upgrade. Now, McCool Hardman is very limited on everything he's doing. Um, he's actually going to be the wide receiver three for the Jets, even when they start to use him more. It's really going to be hard to trust him behind Zach Wilson. Quentin Johnston is the wide receiver three in a much better offense, meaning at least he has the potential to get more targets, get more time in the game, work his way up, and do better as the season goes on. I don't like either of them, to be honest, but overall, Quentin Johnson is definitely the better and higher up of the two. 
Um, that's about all MILF did. Then we go ahead and look at... Then we're going to go right ahead and look at Homeland Security, a.k.a. myself. Daniel Jones is doing fucking phenomenal. Anyway, ignoring Daniel Jones and his uh, just dog shit play. Um, I lost Ezekiel Elliott, who we already talked about. I don't think he's going to be that bad of a loss. He's just been kind of playing like shit because the Patriots aren't giving him a chance. Um, I did gain Juju Smith-Schuster, who we already talked about, who's going to be one of those uh, decently consistent guys who has the upside if he starts getting touchdowns. I'd prefer to get more catches from him and more yards, but that's kind of what you're going to get out of Mac Jones because he can't throw more than five yards down the ball field, apparently. Um, and then also on top of that, you're going to be looking at the addition of Jackson Smith, the Jigbo. We talked about him who has the upside to keep going as we go throughout the season. He, you saw it week one and two where he only had 4.3 week one, three catches for 13 week two, five for 34. He's on the trend going up. If he can keep doing that, that's good news overall. And he should be able to keep climbing. Um, and then the addition of Darnell Mooney, who, isn't pro isn't that good, but he did do really good week one. So maybe the addition of DJ Moore helps him out. That's kind of what I'm hoping for uh, once he gets healthy, but we'll have to wait and see. There's really no way to say for sure. I don't think he's anything great, but for these guys being depth guys, I'm pretty happy with all three of them. I think it's a good upgrade at my wide receiver position. The only guy I lost was that Quentin Johnston, who I think alone gets canceled out by Jackson Smith and Jigba. I'd rather have Smith and Jigba anyway. So overall, that's what I got there. Um, and then in terms of my defensive backs, I lost Buda Baker and Jesse Bates, which I'm not happy about. And I gained Jason Pinnock, who is doing just phenomenal so far. At least I'm playing J Bay. But yeah, he you know, he's 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 racking them up, you know. He had like forty five tackles so far against the 49ers. But anyway, no, not at all. He did really good week two, did okay week one. Uh he's supposed to be getting all the snaps at safety now. I haven't been watching this game, so I cannot confirm yet, but I'll start watching after I make this video, and then I'll get back to you guys on WWD, I reckon, um, which will be right after this game, by the way, obviously. Um, yeah, overall, I don't think this is an upgrade. I think it's actually a pretty bad downgrade. I'm not a fan of losing Buda Baker, but he got put on IR, unfortunately, so rip him. Um yeah, overall, I think this is a bad downgrade at defensive back, but I got a lot of really good receivers. Not really good, but a lot of potentially startable receivers or tradable receivers that do have upside. Overall, I'd say it's still a slight upgrade for me, but the loss of Buda Baker might hurt a bit. Um, and then we'll go ahead and look at Pussy as the last guy. Congratulations, you should feel special. You're the last guy just for, just for you, you know. Now, Pussy gained Matt Breida. Gained Tyler Algier for his running back room. I do not believe he lost anybody. No, he did not. Um, Algier, we already talked about him where he has that kind of Alex Madison thing. And I'm glad you kept Matt Breida on your bench overall because as you're going to see here, and then it's not even just the Niners, starting any Giants running back that's not named Saquon Barkley is basically a death sentence because they'll probably use like three different running backs and they'll probably be scrambling a lot with Daniel Jones. So overall, there really isn't much hope to Matt Breed, honestly. I would probably drop him if I were you. There's not really any upside there. Um, then we're going to look at your wide receivers. You lost Arnold Mooney to myself. You didn't gain anyone. So overall, it's a slight downgrade. Um, defense, uh, you gained Kansas City, lost Cleveland. Now, in the short terms of things, I think this is an upgrade. Because you see Kansas City plays... The Bears, then they play the Jets, then Minnesota is going to be a tough one, but then they have easier games with like the Broncos, for example, twice in three weeks after that. But you get into this later season when they have to play the Bills, where they have to start playing the the Chargers, the Raiders, the Bengals, where they're playing the Dolphins, insanely tough offenses. So in the short terms of things, yes, I think that's a good move. But as we talked about in the free agency video. Watch the Browns, because their defense at the end of the year is going to have a ridiculously easy schedule. So overall, I think short-term, upgrade. Long-term, downgrade. I think you're going to regret this if the Browns are not still available later on in the season. But this is just for now. 
uh, linebackers, you gained Jordan Hicks, lost Alex Singleton. That's a pretty good upgrade, I think, especially if, with Alex Singleton on the downway trajectory. Um, Hicks seems to be a little inconsistent, but I think that'll get better as the year goes on. He did that last year, too, where he had a really bad week, too, and did good for like the rest of the season. And then he lost Quiddy Pay, which isn't that bad of a downgrade. However, there is one thing I'm concerned about, and that's Nick Bosa. I have him in another league who has just been stinking it up so far. Good luck to you. I hope he does good just for the sake of both of us. He Ever since some of these guys got paid, I think they just don't really give a shit anymore, but I guess we'll see. Once he plays against a black quarterback, he'll probably get like eight sacks, but so far, unfortunately, he's played only white guys. Once he gets to week four and goes against Joshua Dobbs, I think he'll make him wish slavery came back sooner. Um, other than that, yeah, Nick Bosa is a potential racist. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll upload this one. You guys can watch it during the game, after the game, during halftime, whatever the fuck you want to do. Uh, and have a good one.